James chapter 4, verse 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. If we are going to be able to resist the devil, then we must not have anything in common with him. We must not give him any room in our lives. We must steer clear of certain things. In John chapter 14, verse 30, Jesus said, Hereafter, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. The Bible addresses the issue of consulting mediums. A medium in occultism is a person supposedly able to make contact with the world of spirits, spirit beings or spirits of the dead, about the past, present, and future. Sometimes mediums are called channelers as they allegedly channel communication from the dead to the living. Biblically, mediums partake in occult practices which include necromancy, the magic arts, and fortune telling, all of which are abominations to the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verses 10 through 11, there shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. Within scripture, we are reminded time and time again that there is a spirit world that exists around us. We cannot see it with our natural eyes, but within the Bible, there are instances where God opened an individual's eyes to see the spirit world. For instance, Elijah's servant's eyes were opened into the spirit world in 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 17 through 20, where he saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Today, living in a rationalistic world, there is a spiritual void in humanity. Though many have asserted that there is no spiritual realm, yet there is within us a consciousness and awareness that a spirit world does exist, so that by any phenomena that is unexplainable by rational explanations becomes almost a proof of the supernatural. But it is important that we recognize that yes, supernatural realms do exist, but the supernatural realms are not all good. There is a supernatural realm of evil as well as a supernatural realm of good. So that means supernatural phenomena does not necessarily come from God. And it is false to conclude that if it is supernatural, it must be from God. Today, thousands upon thousands upon millions of people throughout the world are being deceived as a result of supernatural phenomena. And millions of people are being sucked into this new age movement and into occult worship because of the supernatural phenomena. And it is a sad sight to see that so many people believe that because something supernatural has happened, it is of God. There are people who are channelers and they can begin to tell you all kinds of fascinating information about yourself, where you were born, experiences in your early childhood that you never shared with anyone else. And because they know these facts about people that they have not shared with anyone else, people automatically think this must be a good thing. Not knowing the sources of these people are evil. You cannot go to Satan to know the future. He does not know it. There are a lot of things he knows, but the future is not one of them. It is important to know that Satan does not know your future. He simply wishes to create it. I repeat, Satan does not know your future. He simply wishes to create it. There is nothing in the Bible to indicate that Satan is omniscient. God alone is omniscient. And when we say that God is omniscient, it means that he has perfect knowledge of all things. He alone knows the future. There are no verses in the Bible that indicate that Satan knows our future or that he is even able to read our mind or thoughts. But one thing is for sure is that he is very adept at predicting human behavior because he's seen it operate for so long. He did not just arrive on earth last week. He has been against mankind since the days of Adam and Eve in the garden. The Bible gives us instances where we can draw the conclusion that angels watch and observe mankind. 
And also, the Bible gives us instances that reveal to us the behavior of unclean evil spirits, and that they also watch and observe mankind. Allow me to give you two Bible verses that support this claim. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 12. They were told that their messages were not for themselves, but for you. And now this good news has been announced to you by those who preached in the power of the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. It is all so wonderful that even the angels are eagerly watching these things happen. This passage of scripture reveals to us something about angels. Angels do not know all things. They do not. In this passage, Peter is referring to the plan of salvation. Peter wants us to feel more gratitude and wonder for our salvation because the prophets of God and even the angels of heaven long to see what we have now experienced through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Angels watch and observe. They are not omniscient. In the book of Matthew, our Lord Jesus Christ gives us insight into the behavior and nature of unclean evil spirits. They also watch and observe. Matthew chapter 12, verses 43 through 45. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. This is an example of how unclean spirits watch and observe. Notice that when Satan spoke to God regarding to Job, and God suggested Job, Satan was already fully aware of who Job was. These people who consider themselves as channels are receiving information from unclean evil spirits. The information they present is not coming from the one true God. Reason number one why this school of thought believes that this is not Samuel is that God warned his people in several passages of the Bible against consulting mediums or spiritists. God forbids his people from practicing it. The first argument is that if God had chosen not to speak to a person, there is nothing that that person can do to force God into speaking to him. Since God didn't speak to Saul through dreams or through the Urim or by the prophets, then we shouldn't think it wise that God would speak to him through this medium. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 10 through 11. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices their son or daughter in the fire, who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft, or casts spells, or who is a medium or spiritist, or consults the dead. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 31. Do not turn to mediums or seek out spiritists, for you will be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 6. I will set my face against anyone who turns to mediums and spiritists to prostitute themselves by following them, and I will cut them off from their people. The truth is that there are only two sources of spiritual power. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, God said, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. You can choose where you want to get your spiritual power. One leads to life, the other leads to death. Which one would you choose? What are these sources of spiritual power? It is either you get this power from God, or you get it from the second source, the devil. You should not be shocked at all at the mention of this. The devil gives power too. We need to know that people are being empowered by the devil. Many people have gotten power from the devil. What we should know is the devil gives powers to his people too. 1 Samuel chapter 28, verse 7. Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servants said to him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit at Endor. 
The Bible would not mention familiar spirits if they were not real. There was a time when Jesus was being accused of casting out demons by Beelzebub. His reply to his accusers was that any kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. More so, there is no union between light and darkness. The Bible says that we are the light of the world. Why then should a believer descend so low to seek help from darkness? The story of King Saul is a very sad one. He had banished people with familiar spirits from the land of Israel, but at the point he lost contact with God, he disguised himself and went to consult mediums. There are people that come to church and still consult diabolical powers. They want to taste from every side. Meanwhile, the Bible says that a double-minded man cannot receive anything from God. We cannot eat on the Lord's table and still dine with Satan. 1 Peter 5, verse 8 and 9 Be sober. Be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Spiritual warfare is a natural part of the believer's life. The enemy, the devil, always seeks for an opportunity to attack us. But what should we do when the enemy attacks us? Should we stand helpless and plead with the enemy for mercy? The Bible says to be vigilant. That is, we must be careful to watch out for the attacks of the devil. He has no two businesses other than seeking whom to devour. Peter exhorts us to remain clear-headed, sober, and watchful, vigilant. Because Satan has not yet been bound and restrained. At the present time, the devil walks about this world. Hollywood portrays the devil being in hell and being in charge of hell, raising the temperature on people and poking people with a pitchfork. The devil is not in hell. He is very much here on this earth, wandering walking back and forth, looking, seeking like a roaring lion, ready to devour those whom he can. We must resist him. And how? By standing firm against him and being strong in faith. In other words, we are not permitted to run from the devil, we are to fight back. Put on the armor of God. Put on the armor of God and take a stand in the name of Jesus Christ. Put on the armor of God and give no ground to the enemy. Put on the armor of God and don't take a step back. Ephesians 6 verse 13 to 17 Wherefore take unto you the whole armour of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Armour is a protective layer worn over the body against the penetration of bullets by military officers while on the battlefield. Believers are on the battlefield against the devil and his army. We must not go bare to face the devil, we have spiritual armor for our spiritual battles, and the armor is of God. Therefore it can never fail if rightly used. When we put on the armor of God, we can stand against all fiery darts of the wicked. Unfortunately, many people try to fight the enemy under their own power and their own strength. This is not a smart move considering the fact God left us the armor we require to engage and defeat the enemy. If you attempt to 
to stand and face the enemy on your own, the enemy will do unspeakable things to you. He will destroy you if you attempt to face him in your own power and in your own might. Ephesians 6 verse 14 to 17 gives us a list of our defensive weapons to halt all the attacks of the enemy targeted against us. Truth, righteousness, the preparation of the gospel of peace, faith, salvation, and the word of God. Now who are the types of people that demons fear? Demons fear those who have taken their position in Christ. John 1 verse 12 says that all who receive Christ have been given the power to become the children of God. God is not under the devil. His children are not supposed to suffer a defeated life too. I repeat, God is not under the devil. His children are not supposed to suffer a defeated life too. Stop seeing yourself as a victim. Stop seeing yourself as a loser. Stop believing that life is against you. You are a child of God. We are God's children. Therefore, act like it. More so, we are co-heirs with Christ. The Bible says in Romans 8 verse 16 and 17 that we are God's children. Therefore, we are his heirs and joint heirs with Christ. Unfortunately, many believers do not know who they represent in Christ. No wonder the devil bullies them because of their ignorance. Hosea 4 verse 6, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Are you being destroyed by the enemy because you don't know who you are and whose you are? You are a son of the king. You are a daughter of the king. One of the ways people are destroyed by Satan and evil spirits is through condemnation. Satan and evil spirits will come and quite literally beat you on your head with your past and past sins. Satan and his evil demons will make you feel as if you are going to hell because you haven't reached some unreachable standard of righteousness. Satan and his evil demons will torment you with thoughts that you are going to hell. You are going to hell because you are not good enough. This is why you take your position in Christ. Because Christ came and died for people who are not good enough. Jesus Christ came and died for people who are not perfect. And this is what you need to know. Jesus Christ came and died for broken, messed up people like me and you. And I am not going to heaven because of my own righteousness. I am going to heaven because of his righteousness. That is what you need to remember. It is not what I did, but Jesus Christ did. Praise God. This is a call to you. This is a call to every child of God. Take up your position in Christ. Take up your position in Christ. Don't listen to your feelings. Listen to the word of God. Take up your position in Christ. James 4 verse 7, Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. This is the type of person Satan fears and his demons. He fears those who submit to God. Submitting to God is obeying his word and commands. Submitting to God is accepting and acknowledging that God knows best. Submission to God is yielding to the Holy Spirit and His work in your life. Submission to God is to be uncompromising about your faith. And that is the type of people that Satan fears and his demons fear. They fear those who are dogmatic about the Word of God. That is true Bible faith. True Bible faith is dogmatic. It is uncompromising. True Bible faith doesn't care what the world says. It doesn't care what their family or friends say. It sticks to the word of God and the word of God purely. 
A person who submits to God is an upright person. A person who submits to God seeks righteousness and holiness, a peace with all of mankind. A person who submits to God shuns evil. A person who submits to God lives a Job type of life, a life of total commitment to the Lord, a life of total faithfulness. Though the wind may blow, the waves may rise, I will stay with the Lord. And that is the type of people that Satan fears, the people who have made a commitment to walk with God just like Enoch. Now the reason Satan and his demons fear this type of people is not because they have some supernatural glory only unique to them. The reason demons fear this type of people is because they fear God Almighty. James 2 verse 19, You believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. No demon fears a person, but they fear God. They fear him. Stick with God. He is your protector. He is your shield. Look what the Bible says, what will happen to you if you move closer to God. James 4 verse 8, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Come close to the one true God, and he will draw close to you. Look at the story of Job. The devil knew Job. He knew exactly who Job was, but he knew that he could not touch him. God had a hedge of protection around him, and everything that happened to Job only happened because God allowed it to happen. You don't ever have to fear when walking with the Lord. You are protected. You are covered, and anything that does happen will be a result of God allowing it to happen. To walk with God is not unique to only special people. Everyday run-of-the-mill Christians can all walk with God, submit to Him, allow God to be the God of every single area of your life. We have a significant position in Christ. Presently, wherever Christ is, is where every believer should assume. Believers have their position with Christ in heavenly places where he sits, far above the dominion of principalities and powers. Isaiah 43 verse 2 When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee.